My name is Possible, and I'll be your teacher for today. In our previous lecture, we were dealing with business cycle, and that was the last part of the business cycle, right? And then we look at the nature or the forms of the um, economic variables. And he said that economic variables could either be uh, flow variables or stock variables. They are flow variables whereby they could be uh, measured over a period of time. And then they are stock variables whereby they are measured at a point in time. Right? Today is of no exception. We are starting a new topic called National Income Accounting. National Income Accounting. National Income Accounting is not difficult because if you look at it carefully, we have what is called national, we have what is called income, and we have what is called accounting. If you look at them, you can see that it's three ways that are coming together for us to get a topic. It is national because macroeconomics is of national interest. Macroeconomics is of international interest. So we are saying national in the sense that we are measuring the aggregates. We are measuring the totality. We are measuring the summation. National. Income. Income is not difficult at all. When you talk about income in economics, we are talking about the measurement of all the goods and services that has been produced in a country over a period of time. You can use that one. You can also say that income or national income talks about the money value of all goods and services that have been produced in a country for a period of time, say one year. Technically, you can also refer to national income as the goods and services that have been produced within one economy within a particular period after deducting depreciation. Listen to me carefully. The measurement of goods and services within an economy or that has been produced within an economy. Or you can also say that is the measurement of the individual income that has transpired within an economy after taking depreciation or after subtracting depreciation. So that means you put everything together and then you subtract depreciation. Because depreciation is a capital allowance. It's a consumption of fixed capital. And then because of that, we are saying that we set it aside as a provision that when some of our machines needs repairs, we could use that amount to repair them. And then because of that, we are saying that depreciation must not be part of our incomes because we have set it aside. How many got to know the definition of national income? Let us add accounting to it. And then we are going to get national income accounting. Whenever we are talking about accounting, we are talking about like giving an account or approach that you are going to use to measure something. So national income accounting simply means the approach or the method that is going to be used to measure the national income. So national income accounting is the approach or the method that is going to be employed in the measurement of the national income. And then we have understood the national income to be the goods and services.
services that have been produced within an economy over a period of time, say one year. So substitutionally, we can say that national income accounting is the method or the approach for the measurement of all the goods and services that have been produced within an economy over a period of time, say one year. I hope you get it. Now, straight away from there, let us look at the components of national income. So, we have to look at the definition. Now, we are going to look at definition. And then the second one is the component. We are going to look at the components of national income. Let me give you a secret or a hint that will help you to learn it so fast and so easy. Look at it. Before you could know the components of the national income, think like this. Look at the factors of production. We have land. Land is a factor of production. So ask yourself, what is the reward of land? Indeed, it is rent. You are a good student. So the reward of land is rent or royalties. So if the payment of land is rent and royalties, then it is an income. So we can conclude by saying that one component of the national income is rent or royalties. I hope you are getting it. Rent or royalties. The second factor of production is labor. Labor is a cost or is an expenditure item. Ask yourself, what is the reward of labor? The reward of labor is wages or salary. Sometimes it's commission, compensation. All of them are the, could be categorized under the rewards of labor. I hope you are getting it. So, under the labor as a factor, we have all these items as income behind it. So you can add those items, salary wages, commission or compensation, as another component of the national income. So now we have got it too. Other side is entrepreneur or entrepreneurship. What is the reward of entrepreneur or entrepreneurship? Guess it right, guess it right. Profit. So it will be corporate profit, household profit, whatsoever the case may be, it is profit. So that profit also is another component of national income. The last one of the factor of production is what? Capital. Now what is the reward of capital? Guess it right. Yes, interest. So interest causes an inflow or is an inflow item. It is an income. So we can capture that. I hope you are getting it. So the component of national income, don't look at the factors of production, don't list the factors of production, but the factors of the production could serve as a guide for you to get land as rent, for you to get something like rent or royalties, salary or wages, compensation or commission, interest, corporate profits or household profits or whatsoever. These are the components of 
the income. Having understood this, let us go down and look at some of the terminologies that we are going to use under national income accounting. I will never forget household. Under microeconomics, MI micro, when we're looking at the individual, we look at what is called customers and consumers. But when you come to macroeconomics, we don't refer to them as customers or consumers. But a group of customers or consumers gives us what is called household and the macroeconomics. And the microeconomics individual, we look at suppliers and producers. But under the concept of macroeconomics, we are going to deal with firms. So we are going to deal with firms. So when you talk about the household, household is talking about the group of consumers or customers. And then the firm is talking about a group of suppliers. Now before I leave you, let me explain the household very well unto you and then the fair, and then I leave you for our next lecture. Look at it carefully. We have terminologies. Terminologies. We have one household. And then we have friends. Now the households, households are the owners of the factors of production. They own the land, they own the labor, capital, and then they are in the entrepreneurs. So we are saying that the factors of the production, households are the owners. Put at the back of your mind. If the households are the, factor, are the owners of the factors of production, they sell them to the fair. Because labor, labor, or laborers, they work in the fair. They contribute to the conversion of raw materials or input into finished goods. So, laborers or laborers work in fair. So firms employ the service of labor. Capital, they are owned by the household and they are employed by the firm. Land, they are owned by the household and they are employed by the firm. So in all, we are saying that the households are the owners of the factors of production. Good. If the household are the owners of the factors of production, in economics, one of the ten principles of economics is that there is nothing called free lunch. So the households, they sell their factors of production to the firms. And then if they are selling their factors of production to the firms, they have to sell these factors of production on the market. So the households sell their factors of production on a, ma a market called Factor market. So they are the owners of the factors of production. They sell the factors of production on the market for factor market. And then when they sell their factors of production on factor market, they get what is called factor income. Factor income, which is the component of the national income. So they get what is called factor income. So if you want to get full marks under economics, when we are defining household, we say that household are the of the factors of production and then they sell the factors of production on a factor market 
in order to get factor income. I hope you are getting it. Good. They are the owners of the factors of production and they sell the factors of production on the factor market in order to get a factor income. Let us look at the fair. Now we are saying that the fair.